Hi everyone. Um, thanks very much for coming. Um, and thanks, Diane, for the, um, for the introduction. Um, I've been working on this research for a little while now. Um, as many of you will know, um, I've had some really valuable um, feedback and contributions from practitioners along the way, right from the very beginning, actually, at my proposal um, stage. So um, it's a privilege for me to stand up here today and share some of the findings of my work. Um, and I hope, um, I hope it'll be useful for you um, as you consider um, crowdsourcing um, as an option or perhaps as you um, continue to sort of tinker away um, at pro um, projects in, in progress. Um, I also just wanted to um, shout out to Trevor Owens and Michael Lascarides who are joining us um, here at the conference this year. They've been a really um, big inspiration for me over the last few years um, in their work on crowdsourcing. Um, so it's really, it's a really, um, it's a buzz for me to, um, to be contributing to the same kind of conversation. Um, so let's crack on. Um, when I set out on my PhD adventure, um, I had a few questions buzzing around in my head. Um, what are the aspects of design that influence participation and contribution quality on websites for crowdsourcing cultural heritage? Uh, which aspects of design are more influential than others? And how could websites for crowdsourcing cultural heritage better support participation and quality contribution? Um, these are just some of the questions that my research has sought to answer, and today I'll be reporting back um, on what I found. Um, but first I'll just back up a little bit to, um, to set the scene. Uh, so these are some of the potential benefits um, for crowdsourcing. They're the reasons why an increasing number of GLAM institutions um, are crowdsourcing the processing of cultural heritage assets. Um, so crowdsourcing labour-intensive processes such as transcribing historical documents, recording personal histories, tagging paintings with keywords, correcting OCR text, uh, cataloguing cultural heritage collections, um, these are better enabling our institutions to create or enhance digitised data for public use and research uh, and engage the wider community. Uh, but along with these potential benefits um, come a number of challenges. Though crowdsourcing um, is still in an experimental phase and projects that involve cultural heritage collections um, haven't always been cost effective, uh, crowdsourcing is also an umbrella term for a, a really wide variety um, of initiatives. And while the success of any crowdsourcing project relies on sufficient participation and quality contribution, the design of these crowdsourcing systems needs to reflect the, um, the particular approach, um, the type and the context um, of each initiative. Um, as Diane mentioned in the introduction, there are common project constraints, uh, such as limited time, resources and expertise, uh, and the guidance available for designing and evaluating websites for crowdsourcing cultural heritage um, is somewhat limited uh, and fragmented. Uh, so with these potential benefits and common challenges in mind, uh, I've developed a set of design principles for supporting participation and contribution quality. Um, these design principles are now freely available um, on my website, nonprofitcrowd.org. Um, if anybody's actually, um, I release them um, the first version in March um, and a slightly revised version uh, in July. Uh, and if anybody's um, using those or has had a bit of time to just digest them, um, I'd be really interested in your feedback if, if you want to catch up with me um, over the conference um, or after. Uh, so this new set of design principles um, builds on um, a foundation. It draws on existing guidance for um, highly interactive websites, uh, online communities, uh, crowdsourcing in general and crowdsourcing cultural heritage um, in particular. Um, the principles also incorporate the findings of my study, um, which I'll be talking about today, and um, the results of uh, some website inspections and a questionnaire. Um, I just wanted to throw out a couple of caveats here. Um, as, I, as I've explained um, in the report, um, containing the principles on my website, these design principles are intended to supplement, not replace generic um, principles for usability. 
Um, also, while they're um, while they're quite, they, they appear quite prescriptive. The idea is that they are one tool among many, um, and ideally, uh, a project would also be going through um, a rigorous requirements process, um, and ideally, user testing along the way as well. Um, so I'm going to go, I'm going to touch on some of the principles today, but I'm not going to run through them all, um, as many of you will from be familiar with them already, and those of you who aren't can, can catch up with them online. Um, but what I did want to talk about um, is which aspects of design um, I found to be more influential than others on participation and contribution quality. Um, so to answer this, I collected data from over 250 former, current and prospective users of websites for crowdsourcing cultural heritage. Uh, these included people from New Zealand, Australia, UK, USA, Europe and elsewhere. Um, some of those were affiliated with the cultural heritage sector and tertiary institutions, but many were from other professions as well. Um, thank you to um, any of you in the audience who participated uh, in that uh, questionnaire. I really appreciated the support. I got a really good uptake. Um, so based on the results of the questionnaire, I was able to order the uh, rank the 21 design principles according to their likely level of influence on participation and work quality. Um, and the idea behind this was to help project teams prioritise aspects of design and optimise their available time and resources. The literature suggests that um, in many cases project teams would be working to requirements but would run out of time or funding um, to, to implement all those requirements. So the idea behind ranking these design principles is so that they can focus, they can sort of, um, they can order, um, work through them in, in order um, of influence to, to some degree. Um, so this brings me to my next question. Um, which is how could these websites um, better support participation and quality contribution? So to answer this question, I evaluated a sample of 20 websites using the new design principles. Um, my sample encompassed um, multiple host types being the institutions driving these um, projects, um, including galleries, libraries, um, archives, museums, research institutions and collaborations of these institutions. Um, the sample enco encompassed 10 common process types, um, including transcribing, recording, creating content, uh, tagging, correcting, contextualisation, uh, cataloguing, commenting, critical responses or stating preferences, which um, you might be more familiar with in terms of voting. Um, Geo-referencing, uh, linking and mapping. Uh, the sample also encompassed six common asset types. Um, so cultural assets, um, cultural heritage assets being um, text, image, ephemera or intangible cultural heritage. Um, geospatial assets and cultural heritage assets containing numerical or statistical information. Um, so I'm going to talk you through some of the results from the study, hopefully to illustrate how the design principles might be able to assist with designing and evaluating um, this type of website. Um, I've also, I've also organised the principles into four categories um, to represent the key themes um, that appear to me to be underlying this user experience. Um, so websites for crowdsourcing cultural heritage support participation and contribution by informing users, supporting and engaging users, and nurturing and sustaining the user community. Uh, so websites can, inf uh, can effectively inform users by providing clear, concise and sufficient task instruction, showing how project output is freely, um, is or will be freely accessible to the public, keeping the website current, prioritising key information, presenting reasons to contribute, displaying project progress and conveying the credibility of the project. Um, now, I found that the primary purpose of informing users is to support participation. Um, based on the results of the questionnaire, these principles um, 
were found to be moderately to very influential on the decision to contribute and uh, to continue contributing. Uh, so overall, the results of my website inspection suggest that the website sampled are effectively informing users, um, but I did uncover um, what appears to be a common design weakness. Um, respondents um, in the questionnaire rated the provision of clear, concise uh, and sufficient task instruction as very influential on both the decision to volunteer and contribution quality, um, and in fact the most influential of all the design principles that were presented to them. Um, however, only 12 out of the 20 or 60% of the websites that I inspected fully complied with this principle. So um, how could task instruction be improved? Um, well, to start with, terms, abbreviations and interactive elements should be clearly explained and we should be avoiding jargon. Um, task instru instruction should be concise and easy to follow so as not to overwhelm our users, but sufficiently detailed to enable our users to complete the task efficiently and effectively. Um, new users should be able to start contributing within a short space of time, and contributors should be able to work independently with confidence. Um, a diverse, use of, uh, diverse group of users with varying levels of skill, knowledge, and available time should be supported by instruction delivered in various formats. Um, for example, task instruction might begin with an overview of task workflow, uh, using video tours of the task interface, uh, instructive graphics, step-by-step -step tutorials or demonstrations, uh, incorporating step-by-step -step instructions or hover, pop-up instructive text um, into the task interface can also support new contributors. Um, more detailed instruction in the form of written guidelines and help documentation, uh, FAQs, screenshots and examples, knowledge bases or forums, um, these can all support contributors who require additional guidance. Um, so as you can see here, the website Ancient Lives, um, which provides an interactive tutorial with step-by-step -step -step instructions, um, is an example of, inf of, a, of an effective task instruction. Um, so websites for crowdsourcing cultural heritage can effectively support users by minimising user error and the effort to contribute, uh, enabling users to review contributions, clearly identifying tasks, providing task options and simplifying the task. Uh, the results of my questionnaire found that the design principles in this category are at least moderately influential on participation and or contribution quality. Um, the results of the website inspections suggest that the websites that I sampled um, in general are effectively supporting users, but I did identify scope for improvement. Um, in five cases, sustained participation could potentially be improved by minimising the effort to contribute. Um, this was rated by questionnaire respondents as very influential on the decision to con continue volunteering. So how could this aspect of design be improved? Um, well, websites should minimise the necessity for users to provide the same information more than once and not demand excessive effort when um, aspects of the task could be achieved more efficiently by the system. Um, enabling users to perform tasks effectively and efficiently encourages our new users to continue contributing um, and it encourages established users to make larger and or frequent contributions. Um, so some examples of minimising effort, um, uh, allowing users to contribute without registering um, or making registration optional or simplifying that process by incorporating existing accounts um, for web applications such as Google or Twitter or Facebook. Um, other examples of minimising effort um, are prioritising components or modules of the task which allow the users um, to contribute, just to meet minimal requirements if they've only got a short space of time to contribute. Um, other examples are auto-save functionality, um, automate, um, automatic completion of data fields that are based on their previous contributions, um, automatically directing users to the next step of the task uh, and enabling users to save um, and return to their work in a new session. 
Um, so I found that some examples of non-compliance um, were an unintuitive sequence of interaction, um, confusing or interrupted workflows, um, an absence of the interactive functionality that users are likely to need and expect, such as image magnification. Um, requiring excessive effort to successfully manipulate digitised images or text, um, and in some cases unclear or difficult input formats. Um, the example of um, Europeana here um, is um, I found to be um, a good example of minimising the effort to contribute. The site allows contributions to meet minimal requirements um, through the use of mandatory data input fields and then the rest are optional. Um, the site enables users to save draft contributions and then return to them in a future session. Websites for crowdsourcing cultural heritage can effectively engage users by being attractive acknowledging participation, encouraging users to engage with the collection, and conveying a sense of fun. Uh, now, the primary purpose of engaging users, I found, is to support participation. Um, based on the results of the questionnaire, the design principles in this category were found to be slightly to moderately influential on the decision to contribute and or sustain participation. Um, the results of the inspections suggest that the websites sampled um, are effectively encouraging users to engage with the collection um, and that most websites are attractive to users. However, I did uncover um, a common weakness. Only 60% of the websites that I sampled fully um, complied with the principle of acknowledging participation um, and this could potentially be negatively impacting on sustained participation. Uh, the sample also rated relatively poorly for conveying a sense of fun um, with only eight of the 20 websites fully complying with this principle. Um, and I did just want to point out that based on the websites inspected, um, the nature of the collection doesn't really have any bearing on compliance with this principle. Um, the websites that I sampled um, that, can, that effectively conveyed a sense of fun range from those which focused on um, art collections, menu collections, ship logs, uh, natural history catalogues and maps to war diaries, uh, photos of the Titanic rescue and even personal stories of 9-11. So what does um, acknowledging participation involve? Um, well, this design principle explains that um, user participation um, might encompass registration, completion of steps in the task, um, completion of the task as a whole, submitting the task and cumulative contributions. Um, feedback on user participation is always positive um, and it might take the form of text or visual indicators. Um, the idea being that this encourages new visitors to complete the task and encourages established um, users to continue contributing. Uh, examples of compliance with this principle uh, are thanking the users for the tasks completed and then it gives you the opportunity to invite them to contribute more. Uh, acknowledging the user's contribution to the project goal um, or updating individual progress indicators. Um, in the example here, your paintings tagger um, provides a good example of acknowledging participation. Websites for crowdsourcing cultural heritage can effectively nurture and sustain the user community by conveying a sense of community, um, supporting community interaction, publicly recognising contributions uh, and supporting content sharing. Uh, the results of the questionnaire found that the design principles in this category um, are slightly to moderately influential on participation and or contribution quality. Uh, the results of the website inspection suggested um, that there's scope for improvement among the websites sampled uh, in relation to nurturing and sustaining the user community. Um, only five of the websites inspected fully complied with all the principles in this category. Um, I found it interesting that despite community interaction being enabled um, on 15 of the 20 websites, um, only 11 actually successfully conveyed a sense of community. Um, and incorporating um, design features to achieve this could potentially increase participation and contribution quality. 
Um, furthermore, the 10 out of 20 websites that don't currently publicly recognise contributions could potentially increase participation and contribution quality by doing so. Um, and the eight websites that aren't currently supporting content sharing could potentially increase participation by incorporating this functionality. Um, so let's take a look at the, at the uh, a closer look at the principle of um, conveying a sense of community. Um, so the project community is comprised of the contributors or users, volunteers, uh, and the project team, and it might include um, users of, of the project output. Um, a visitor's decision to contribute may be positively influenced by the prospect of belonging to a community and by the presence of other people, um, and this also raises expectations of project success. Uh, users who are motivated by being part of a community um, may submit higher quality contributions due, due to the sense of commitment um, and return to contribute more. So some of the methods used to convey a sense of community include emphasising the collaborative nature of the project, requiring contributors to register, uh, and displaying contributor names or handles, contributor profiles, uh, and evidence of community interaction. Um, some other examples include displaying welcome messages to new contributors, um, publicly acknowledging new contributors, uh, publicly displaying community announcements such as project news, project, um, progress updates, new website features, that kind of thing. Um, and linking to related crowdsourcing communities, um, such as um, you can see in the Zooniverse projects. Um, so a website that does not convey a sense of community to users, um, despite uh, employing techniques that you would think would achieve this, um, st is still an example of non-compliance. So this is a very, very subjective um, a thing when you're evaluating a site. Um, old weather successfully conveys a sense of community. Um, for an example, for, just as an example, the site um, emphasises the collaborative nature of the project by referring to contributors as crew. Um, so overall, uh, the results suggest that um, if we're to take the sample and to um, go out on a limb and generalise. Um, websites for crowdsourcing cultural heritage are effectively informing and supporting users um, and now these encompass the most influential aspects of design on website goals. Um, however, there are opportunities to support participation and contribution quality in all areas, um, particularly in relation to engaging users and nurturing and sustaining the user community. Uh, so thank you very much for listening. I hope that's been um, helpful. Um, again, for the full set of design principles, they're available on the site along with uh, some other crowdsourcing res um, resources, um, including um, a rough and ready um, website inspection report if you want to take these for a bit of a test drive. Um, and again, if you've got any feedback um, on them, I'd be really keen to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you.